Section 513, write an equation from data. Um, if you're familiar with how to uh, get an equation from a table, uh, XY table, then this will almost be the same thing. Um, we don't have to worry about graphing it, but that's coming up in the, the next section. And so we, we've got to make sure that you're comfortable uh, doing this. So let's take a look at this. Data is given in a, a two-column format a lot of times. Um, if the increases or decreases of those ordered pairs are at a constant rate, then you can find a linear equation for the data. So here's what it's saying. If, if we actually take a bunch of points from a straight line, uh, we should be able to take... Uh, data from those points, put them into an XY table, and, and not give you anything else, and you should be able to construct the equation from that. So, in a sense, it's almost exactly like 5.11, uh, where we gave you an XY table and said, go get an equation. But the little twist is this. Write an equation for the following set of data. They might give you a scenario like this. Dan set his cruise control in his car and recorded the mileage on his odometer every five minutes. And you see here uh, as two different ways that we can show this table. Here is your more traditional vertical XY table, you know, two columns. Here would be a horizontal way. And do you notice that I actually have an X and a Y written there? Um, usually I would say the, the column on the left is your X um, variable. Not always. But let's just say 80% of the time. And I'm kind of making that up. But I, I will say this. More times than not, this will be your X variable. The second column will be your Y variable. Same thing if you see it written sideways. The first one, the top one, will be your X variable. And the second one would be your Y variable. And if you notice, we have them written the same way. Uh, at five minutes, the mileage on this car is 28,490 miles. Uh, over here, uh, minutes in operation. Well, that was five minutes. Uh, for the five minutes, his mileage was at 28,490 miles, and it was shown as the odometer reading. Um, how do we go about doing this? Well, I, I did say that it's essentially uh, the same thing that you're used to seeing in sections 5.11. So let's take a closer look at this vertical table right here. And I'll, I'll cover this up, and we'll just go through with it. So if this is your x value and this is its y value, this is an ordered pair. That also means that 10 and 28,494 becomes an ordered pair. So technically, we could graph these two points on a Cartesian plane, uh, albeit a very large one to accommodate these sorts of y values here of 28,000 and some change. Um, and then you could graph the line through these two points. Um, looking at the graph, we could backtrack it to the y-intercept and with the slope. Uh, that we could get from there, we could build a slope-intercept uh, equation. Really, though, that would be such a pain, uh, especially when we could do this. Step one, find the slope. So uh, let's just call this one point one. This second set will be point two. Um, and let me just delete this. And let's just get used to reading it from the table. This would be your y2. This would be your y1. This would be your y, or excuse me, x2. This would be your x1. And so when you plug them into the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we find out very quickly that our slope is 4 fifths, or 4 over 5. So um, that's pretty easy. Now we come through and we're like, you know what? Uh, let's just take our slope and use one of these points in the table uh, to put in the point slope formula. And you remember the point slope formula, y minus y1 equals slope uh, x minus x1 in parentheses. And so after we plug it in, and uh, please forgive me, uh, this is why you shouldn't do math and ink. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that my paper scanned in correctly since I don't have my smart sleep this weekend. Um, this is an x, okay? So that's x minus 5. Um, after this, we can distribute. So 4 fifths times x is 4 fifths x. 4 fifths times negative 5 equals negative 20 over 5. And negative 20 over 5 simplifies down to negative 4. So now the last thing we have to do is just get our y by itself. So let's add 28,490 to both sides. And amazingly, um, we get y equals 4 fifths x plus 28,486. That's our equation. We have our slope. We have our y-intercepts. We're done. So it came down to two steps. Uh, get the slope, plug it into the point slope, and just kind of simplify it 
to make it to where the Y is all by itself. If you're having trouble after you find the slope about what to do, go back and watch my videos for uh, 5.10 or 5.11. That'll give you more detail uh, into that, plus it goes slower. This is meant to what do you do when you're looking at these scenarios like this. Um, let's just say we have a donut shop and we're given this table. Here's Doug's donut shop, X column. In fact, it doesn't give you an X here. I just put that in red, meaning you're going to have to know, hey, this left column, let's just put it in X. Right column, let's just put it a Y. Um, I could go through a lot more conversations about why it's X. Uh, usually time element is, is put in as the X. Um, but then we'd have to get into a discussion about functions and, and uh, everything else, of the input and output. And we're not there yet. So just, just stick with me. Let's just make the left column an X for right now, unless I tell you otherwise. And the right column will be Y. Um, we could go graph these two points, but why? We, we can go find the slope um, by just using our formula, y2 minus y1. So 85,000 minus 55,000 is 30,000. And then x2 minus x1 is on the bottom, so 4 minus 1 is 3. What's 30,000 divided by 3? 10,000. Our slope is a very big number. Who cares? Uh, we use the same formula that we've been doing. 10,000 is what it is. Maybe it has a decimal sometimes. Don't worry about it. If you've done the, the formula correctly, that is the line slope. And sometimes you'll get some very strange slopes. Um, after step one, then you go through and you take this slope that we needed uh, along with one of the points. I, I recommend using the smaller uh, point. So I use 10, uh, excuse me, 1 and 55,000, that first point off the table, 1 and 55,000. One is my X, so that goes in for X1. 55,000 was my Y1. 10,000 is my slope, so it goes right there. Uh, now we can distribute 10,000 times X is 10,000 X, and 10,000 times negative 1 is negative 10,000. Now you just get the Y by itself. Hmm. Add 55,000 here, and that crushes that side out to where we're left with the Y all by itself. Keep the balance of the equation by 55,000 to it. There we go. That's our equation for the line. We're done. It's that quick, that simple. If you can find the slope of the line and then plug it into this point slope formula, distribute, get the y to itself, you'll get the equation every single time. You won't even have to think about it. So you've got a lot of uh, homework problems tonight. Um, good luck. Uh, if you have any questions, email me. Uh, stop by after school. Stop by in the, the morning. Remember, uh, if you show up just as soon as the bell rings, normally I've got to take attendance. Uh, I'm dealing with absences. I'm doing a lot of different things. I don't really have time to take five to seven minutes out of my class uh, to talk to you right then. Uh, we will be reviewing the homework. Um, but if you need extra help and the review may not be enough, come see me before school or after school, and we'll do the best we can.